Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner. I'm Heidi Fang, joined by Phil Devine, and today, our special live in-studio guest, UFC welterweight Robbie Lawler. And uh, he has a fight coming up here at UFC 173. He'll be taking on Jake Ellenberger. And uh, tickets for that do go on sale Friday, April 11th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So you guys want to get onto Ticketmaster.com to make sure to check out those tickets on sale. Uh, Robbie, it is again a pleasure to have you in studio talking about UFC 173 and your upcoming fight I mean, the welterweight division right now, man, it is on fire, and you are heading it off at the number one contender in that division. Uh, how much do you feel like you really, really have a fire lit under your belly after that uh, Johnny Hendricks fight? Yeah, it was a close fight, but uh, really what it comes down to is just getting better every day and uh, being able to work on techniques and skills and my athleticism and just getting better so that I can be the best fighter in the world. Yeah. One of, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Heidi. One of the things that I noticed in that fight was you did an excellent job of defending against the takedowns. And literally, I feel like that fight, the, the difference was that one takedown in the fifth round. But up till then, you did an amazing job of, of defending against them. Uh, how imperative is it for you, do you feel like, to really get into the wrestling uh, and be able to be, I guess, aggressive with it or to for yourself to be able to, uh, I guess, challenge a guy like Johnny when it comes to wrestling? Yeah, I've been uh, wrestling for a long time. Um, I wrestled at the Hawk Club uh, up in Iowa, and American Top Team really pushed me in a lot of situations that I'd be in in fights, and uh, so I'm ready to go wrestling-wise. I'm not I'm not too worried about anybody else, but uh, just trying to be better in every aspect of MMA. Well, we were talking about it earlier, and actually uh, it's funny for – for most people, they say the average lifespan of an MMA fighter is 12 years. And just yesterday, just yesterday, 13 years ago, you made your debut in this sport, your very first professional fight. And I know you had a lot of amateur fights beforehand, but you seem to be right now in, in that minority. Is You're not at the end of your career. You seem to be just hitting your stride. W where does this come from? Um, I just been around a lot of really good champions and um, learned from a lot of mistakes, but I've been able to take care of my body and uh, listen to it and listen to my trainers as far as rehab and just doing the right things and um, and I still have the drive. And some of those guys that you had been around early on in your career, Pat Militich, Matt Hughes. Uh, how much have you actually kept in touch with them now and maybe even discussed your fights uh, with them? Um, I, I still talk to uh, Pat every once in a while, but I, I talk to Matt all the time and Jens Pulver all the time. So there's guys out there that uh, have had a big part in my career, and I still uh, keep in touch with them for sure. It's funny how you bring up the name, like guys like Jens and, and Matt and Pat. You know, when you first started in the UFC, Let's be honest, those were the Wild West days of fighting, of pro fighting. Things were so much different back then. But you got your start training with the best of the best. I mean, champion Pat Militage, champion Matt Hughes. I mean, that was, uh, and Jens Pulver. I mean, th that was the Team Extreme days, you know. How much has that benefited today? I mean, did you learn how to control yourself and how to be a professional at that young age? Yeah, I mean, in the room, you just learn how to survive and you learn how to get better. If you're not getting better, then you're just going to get beat out of the room. So mentality, it helped a lot training with the best in the world. I wasn't worried about anyone else. But uh, Matt Hughes really showed me a lot of uh, – how to be a professional, how to do the interviews, how to have to wake up early because you have to go <laughs> do something early in the morning. It just showed showed me how to be a professional. Yeah, and it's funny you talk about the room, and, and it was the room. There was there was so many there's so many stories that come out of uh, that Militage fighting camp, and uh, obviously Tuesday night sparring sessions. I believe it was Tuesday. It could have been every night for all I know. But uh, we had talked about off air about how. Uh, Johnny, leading up to the fight with you, had talked about how he doesn't really spar as much uh, full contact these days. But you had been in there, and you sparred like it was a fight every time. Do you still do that? 
Yeah, I actually took a lot of time off from sparring. I don't know, five, six years where I didn't spar at all. But over the past year and a half, I have been sparring at American Top Team, sharpening my skills and getting ready. Uh, but I think you really, to fight at a high level and to compete at in the UFC, you have to spar and you have to be sharp. Something that I noticed during that countdown episode ahead of the fight with Johnny was how hard you were training. I mean, your circuit training seemed just off the chains as far as how much you were pushing yourself. And I feel like in this sport, obviously, it's just as much mental as it is physical. And something you had said ahead of that fight was that you had really developed in your maturity and your growth. And what caused that change? What was it really that sparked in you a difference? Um, just coming back to the UFC, uh, when I fought Koscheck was, was a huge turning point and going down to 170, it was kind of like, uh, the excitement was back for me. I was excited to be in the UFC. I was excited to be fighting against the best in the world and show what I was capable of. And I'm excited to push myself every day. And now you talk about pushing yourself every day and now you've fought with the Militage Fighting Systems. You've been on the hit squad with Matt Hughes when he started his team, and now you're over at American Top Team. What's the difference been training with the guys down at Top Team than what you had been used to in the past? Uh, probably the main difference is there are a lot of fighters down there. I have four awesome 170-pounders uh, to train with, but lots of guys you've never heard of. I mean, there's hundreds of guys in the gym, and... 20 coaches so there's there's it's just a huge facility with a lot of really good training partners and coaches to push you yeah it's funny a couple of years ago i think it was muscle and fitness had did an article on the 20 best gyms in the country and most of them were, were powerhouse weightlifting gyms but american top team was on there and they had talked about what it's just an epic facility it is it's so big and so much is in there and you have so many options that it's just it was taken it's taken the mma gym and the regular perceived you know regular gym that people know about to the next level yeah it's a huge facility one thing i like about it is i don't do any thinking out there my coaches tell me what to do what time to show up who i'm training with and what i'm doing so when i'm i don't have to do anything except show up and work hard do you feel like in the gym that maybe you're the guy setting the example now for a lot of the other guys that might be coming in and trying to start up a career? Uh, maybe so, but I'm I'm looking around at like the Dustin Poiriers and seeing these guys pushing themselves. It's uh, you feed off each other. Uh, one guy makes another guy stronger, and just seeing guys pushing themselves, uh, you can't take a back seat. So everyone's just getting out there grinding. Now, we had uh, talked earlier, I mentioned that the Wild West days of the UFC and of mixed martial arts in general and what you went through. And, you know, I, a friend of mine written, wrote an article a couple months back about fighting for $40 in a T-shirt and, you know, how things have changed to where they are. I mean, look, you're on a, a mixed martial arts radio show that airs on regular Fox radio five mornings a week. Did you ever think that the sport would be where it is today? No, I wasn't ever really worried about that. I, and uh, when I first started, I don't know if I would have got into it if I had to do all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> I just love fighting. I love competing, and I love uh, martial arts. So uh, putting everything together is just it was huge. But uh, I never thought the sport would be this big. Today we have with us UFC welterweight. Robbie Lawler, and he is fighting at UFC 173, taking on the juggernaut, Jake Ellenberger. Let's get into that fight a little bit because uh, Jake is also one of those top welter rates that we've seen in the division. Uh, but it's been quite a while since he fought. The last time we saw him was in July. He took on Rory McDonald and, and suffered a loss there. So what do you think about Jake coming into this fight? Yeah, uh, he's a really good opponent. I mean, his wrestling's really good and his striking's really good. And um, he's a winner, and he comes to fight. And uh, I have to, I have to look out. He hits hard, so uh, I have to be sharp. It's a rarity in this sport. I mean, your last fight was basically it was a, a fight between two guys that had that God-given natural knockout power, which isn't you don't see it often. But now your next fight is basically the same type of thing, a great wrestler with that knockout ability. Now, does training camp change at all? Is it a much different uh, preparation for this than it was for Johnny? Um, I think so. Um, 
I learned a lot from the Hendrix fights, and now it's time to grow as a fighter. So I'm going to work on all aspects as usual, but I'm going to fine-tune a lot of things and and look to get better at everything fast. And um, it's just uh, I'm worried about myself more or less than Jake. Is it more or difficult for you as a fighter to take on a fight right back to back after another one and to get into a different mindset for that training camp for the opponent that you have ahead? It actually worked out pretty well. Um, after the Hendrix fight, I actually worked out Monday at home just to get some blood to my muscles, see how it felt, and it felt pretty good. And then I took the rest of the week off. And then uh, the following week, I started lifting really hard for me as as far as pushing myself um my body just felt good and um I got the fight that Friday and headed out to American Top Team but my body feels really good like it's getting stronger it's getting faster right away I don't feel worn down at all so I'm building which is nice sometimes after a fight you it takes a while to start building but right now I just feel like uh my body's just absorbing everything I'm and, putting and at it. Not a normal fight either. A f- you can't coming off of a five round war. Yeah, it was it was a huge test for me, and uh, I'm excited to get back in there for sure. I mean, fighting for a UFC title is huge, but I want to get back there and I want to show everyone what I'm capable of. Now, if you look at the welterweight picture, we were discussing that a little bit earlier. I mean, you'd have to think that a guy like yourself, Tyron Woodley, uh, Roy McDonald even, um, Jake Ellenberger, and out there somewhere in the wings is uh, Nick Diaz, who may or may not come back to the UFC. I mean, where, how many shot, uh, t- fights away, sorry, how many fights away do you think you are from maybe getting another uh, title shot? Um, I don't really think about that. I think about getting myself better, uh, winning each fight, and uh, I don't really worry about the things I can't control. One thing I can control is how hard I'm going to train and preparing for this fight, so that's what I worry about, and I let Dana White, Lorenzo, and Joe kind of take care of those things, but I actually just want to put myself in the discussion so that if uh, something happens, I'm right there and uh, at least talked about it. And as far as Rory goes, I mean, you had already defeated him, and you talked about that, I think, ahead of that conference call that, you know, maybe Rory should uh, reassess where he stands in the division. But what do you think about that possible matchup between him and Tyron Woodley at UFC 174, should that come to fruition? Uh, where, where do you see that playing into the picture? Um, that's a huge fight. Uh, Rory's a huge draw in uh, Canada, and Tyron, is. Uh, you saw what he could do. He fought uh, Condit and and uh, stopped him. I mean, kind of got hurt, but Tyron Woodley is a uh, really good fighter who's capable of a lot of great things, so those are two guys who are uh, near the top who are in the discussion for sure. Yeah, and it's got to be tough right now uh, when you look at the welterweight division. I mean, you're talking about in the top 10. I don't know how many you have in the welterweight division, but quite a few of them, three or four of them, train with you. So does that make it for any... I mean, I don't want to say you guys are going to have to fight down the road, but, I mean, that's got to make for it maybe turn up the intensity a little bit during camp. Yeah, everyone's uh, kind of striving for the same thing, but we're all trying to get better, and that's uh, the main factor. We have to worry about ourselves first before these uh, title shots come. So everyone's just trying to get better. Everyone's just trying to uh, fine-tune everything so that they're the best in the world. Well, it's funny. You bring up uh, the fact that you're trying to get better, and earlier you mentioned how now with the coaching team you have that they have everything set and assigned for you, and it's not your thing to worry about. And with Dana and Lorenzo and Joe Silva making the fights and figuring out who belongs where they are in the division, something you don't have to worry about. All you have to worry about is tuning yourself, getting better every day. What is this training schedule like? I mean, what is a normal day? Obviously, you know, it's 8.30 here in the morning and you've got to do press tours and all that. But what is, when you're not doing the tours, what's a normal day of training like for Robbie Lawler? Um, either pads in the morning or wrestling in the morning, a strength and conditioning every day, and uh, one day power, one day cardio, some days uh, both. Uh, but uh, then I grapple it's just every day is different. My coaches tell me what to do, but uh, every day I'm working on all aspects. Well, one last question for me, Robbie. What do you do to unwind? Oh, man. I eat. <laughs> I love eating. I love uh, just relaxing and watching TV and eating. That's got to be tough making weight sometimes. Yeah, I work out hard, so <laughs> it, it helps. 
Well, guys, we have to head out here to another break. Uh, Robbie, we would like to thank you so much for joining us here on the MMA Fight Corner. He does have to head out, guys. So uh, we will hopefully get to see you at UFC 173. Again, that's on May 24th at the MGM. Tickets are on sale Friday, April 11th, 10 a.m., Ticketmaster.com.